Let's say if you decide to buy a stock at $10 and it turns out that it was a good investment, the stock rallies to 20. Now, what would you do at this point? Would you hold on to your shares or would you sell all of it? What is a good decision to do at this point? Well, through this example problem, we're going to see well, not only this example problem, but another one, we're going to see what the outcome is if you decide to hold or if you decide to sell at this point. So let's look at this example problem. John, Kelly, and Bruce, all of them, they each buy a thousand shares of stock XYZ, which is trading at $10. The stock goes up to $20 in one month. John sells all of his shares at this price. Kelly decides to hold on to her investment. Bruce sells 500 of his shares. And then after that, the stock goes up to 40 in the next month. Kelly now sells her entire investment and Bruce sells the remaining 500 shares. Which individual generated the most profit in this case? So let's do the math. Let's start with John. So John bought a thousand shares at $10. So his initial investment is 10,000. Now it goes up to 20 and then he sells all of his shares at that price. So 20 times a thousand shares, he sells it for 20,000. So John has a net gain of $10,000 from this trade. Now, Kelly, she holds on to her investment. She sells it when the price goes up to 40 because she held on to it. So Kelly has the same initial investment of 10,000. She bought 100, I mean 1,000 shares at $10 and then she sold it for 40. So 1,000 times 40, that's gonna be 40,000. So the gain that she made on this is 30,000. John made a 100% return on his investment. Kelly made a 300% return. Now let's look at Bruce. His initial investment is the same like everybody else. It's 10,000. Now we need to break up the amount that he receives in two parts. He sold 500 of his shares at $20. So 500 times 20, that's going to be 10,000. Then he sells 500 more of his shares at $40. If you multiply 500 times 40, that's 20,000. You could do five times four, which is 20, and then add the three zeros. So the net proceeds that Bruce received is 30,000. So he started with 10,000. That's how much he paid into the stock and he sold it for 30. So he has a gain of 20,000. Or you could say 200%. So looking at the outcome of these three individuals, which individual generated the most profit? In this case, it would be Kelly. Because the price continued to increase, she held on to her shares and she received the greatest gain. John had the lowest gain because he sold everything at $20. Bruce, however, is somewhere in the middle. He sold some of his shares when it went up but he still held some of it. So his profit potential is between John and Kelly. Now let's see what happens if the stock goes down instead of it going up. So this leads to the second problem. In this case, the price starts at $10. It goes up to $20, just like before. 
the only difference here is instead of it going up to 40, like in the last problem, it drops down to $5. So let's see the profits generated by each individual once it reaches to this point. So in this problem, the initial investment for all three individuals is still the same. They bought a thousand shares of stock XYZ at $10. So John's initial investment is still 10,000. Now he still sells all of his shares at 20. So the net proceeds of that exchange is 20,000. So he still has a gain of 10,000 or 100%. Now in this case, Kelly, she still has the same investment of 10,000. But when the price goes up to 20, she decides to hold on to her investment. And then it drops to five. Let's say as the price goes down, she's holding her shares, hoping that's going to go up until it goes down to five. And then she realizes this thing is not going up. Let me just cash out and cut my losses. So in this case, her $10,000 investment is now worth 5,000. She has a thousand shares and she sells each share for five bucks. So she's looking at a loss of $5,000. So that's a, a return of negative 50%. Now let's consider the third person, Bruce. So he started with the same initial investment and then he sells 500 of his shares at 20. So he still gets 10,000. And then the stock goes down in the next month. Let's say he decides to sell the rest of his shares at five. Let's say he held on to it. So five times 500, that's 2,500. So his net proceeds is 12,500, which means he has a net gain of 2,500. So he has a 25% return. So let's analyze the two situations. In this second situation, because the price went down, John had the greatest return because he cashed out all of his shares early. Let me present this in a, a better manner. So John received a gain of 100% during the first part of the problem. That is when the stock went up from 10 to 20, and then it went up from 20 to 40. During the second part of the problem, when it went from 10 to 20, and then it went down to five, he still had the same return. That is, he was up 100% because in both cases, he sold all of his shares at 20. Now, Kelly, during the first part of the problem, she sold all of her shares at 40. So she received the greatest return in this case. In the second problem, she held on to her shares all the way till it went down to five. So she took a 50% loss. Bruce, on the other hand, he sold half of his shares at 20 and then the rest at 40. So he received a 200% gain. And in the second case, he received a smaller 25% gain. So looking at this, we can see that in both cases, John made a decent return because the price went up. He sold his shares. He's okay. Kelly, she held on to it. If the price continues to go up, that's a good decision. If it falls down, well, not a good decision. 
Bruce, in both cases, he's okay too. Because he took some profit when it went up to 20, and then he doesn't know what's going to happen after that, so he left some on the table. If it were to go up again, he would still make a decent return. If it went down, selling half at 20 covered his cost basis. So no matter how far it went down, he would still be up. So there's an advantage in terms of taking some profit when the price of, of the stock goes up. Because if the price doubles and you take, you sell half your shares, you automatically cover your cost basis. So it doesn't matter what happens at this point, you're always going to be up with that investment. Now let's see which individual receive the most out of these two trades. So let's start with John. For the first trade, his return was 100%, so he had a gain of 10000 For the second trade, his return was the same, 100%. So his total gain is 20000 for these two trades, which is not bad. Now, Kelly, she received 30000 on the first trade because she had a gain of 300%. And for the second trade, she lost half her value, so 5000 But for these two trades, she's up 25000 because the first trade she did very, very well. That's the power of the buy and hold strategy. If you let your winners run, they can offset your losers. Next, we have uh, Bruce. He received the modest gain of 20000 in the first trade. And then for the second trade, 2500 So Bruce did better than John in this case by selling half of his shares when the price doubled. So he didn't do that bad. So in both cases, he made a decent profit. But nevertheless, Kelly made the greatest profit because she made a home run with the first one, which doesn't always happen too much. But nevertheless, Bruce made a decent profit. So I'll let you decide in terms of which option is better. Do you think it's better just to sell all of your shares if the price doubles or to let your winners run, in, as in the case of Kelly, or to sell half your shares if the price doubles and then sell the remainder of shares if it continues to climb. Now, let's go back to Bruce. So he bought the stock at $10, and then it went up to 20 And then it fell down to 5 Now, let's say he decided to buy at $5. So remember, here he owns 1,000 shares. Now he owns 500 shares because he sold 500. So he cashed out 10,000 at that point. Now with that 10,000, if he wants to, he doesn't have to, but let's say that he bought shares at $5. That means he could buy 2,000 shares at $5. If this goes back up and he sells it back at 20, what do you think his profit will be if he did that? So here he put in 10,000. Now his value is 20,000 here. It falls down to five, so he buys 2,000 more. So he has a value of, he has a total of 2,500 shares at this point now. He bought 2,000, and so now he has 2,500 shares. So his total value here is, let's see, five times 2,500, that's 12,500. And then it bounced back to 20. And this is, he has 2,500 shares at $20. So now 
the value of his investment is now 50 bucks. I mean, 50,000 bucks. So notice that his total gain at this point is 40,000. If he decides to sell all of his shares at 20, which he doesn't have to, it can go past 20. But because he cashed out or at least half of his shares at 20, and then he bought a lot of shares back when it fell down, he made a huge return when it ran back up to 20. And so now his gain is the same as Kelly, even though the price didn't go up to 40. So there's the advantages in terms of selling half the shares if the price doubles, because if it falls back down, you could use that gain that you have to buy a stock at a lower price. Now let's continue the story. So the price is now $20 and Bruce has 2,500 shares at this point. Let's say he sells half his shares, which is like what he likes to do when the price goes up. So if he sells 1250 shares times $20, he's cashing out 25,000. And let's say Kelly holds on to her investment at this point. So Kelly has a thousand shares. John would have sold at 20. So John still has his 100% return. Let's say it goes up to 40. Kelly sells all her shares at 40. So she cashed out at 40,000, just like before for net gain of 300% because she gained 30,000. So let me just put 30,000 here. She bought it for 10, sold it for 40. So she gained 30,000. Now let's say Bruce decides to sell the, the half or the rest of his shares rather at 40. So at this point he has 1250 shares because he sold half of it at 20. So 1250 times 40, he's going to cash out at 50,000 at this point. So his net proceeds is 75,000, which means his gain is 65,000. So that's his total return is 650%. So notice that the end price is the same for Kelly and Bruce. However, Bruce was able to gain a higher return all because the stock, it went up and then it went down and then it went back up because he bought the price. I mean, he bought the stock at this point using the gains that he made when he sold it at 20 that allowed him to make a huge return when it rebounded to 40. So because he bought the stock when it was very low, he made a huge return. And so you really don't know what's going to happen when the stock goes up. So by taking some profit, at least you, it gives you the cash to buy the stock if it falls down again, rather than just waiting for it to keep climbing up because you just don't know what's going to happen. And so that's why Bruce was able to make a good return. So now you decide who made the better choice, Kelly, Bruce, or John. Now each situation is different. Sometimes holding the stock for a long time could yield the greatest return. It all depends on what the stock does. But nevertheless, Bruce was in the middle ground between Kelly and John. In all cases, he made a good profit because he took some of the profit whenever the price went up. So that's basically it for this video. Hopefully it gave you some useful ideas when you're buying or selling stocks. So when a price goes up, you can either hold on to your shares in the hopes that it's going to continue to go up. You could sell all your shares out of fear that it's going to fall back down, or you could sell half your shares and not be concerned about whether the market goes up or down. And that's the beauty about selling half your shares when the price doubles, because you're not concerned about what happens in the market. Now, if it continues to go up, then you could sell the remainder of your shares or a portion of it. If it goes back down, then you could 
use the profit that you made when you sold half your shares to buy more shares at a lower price, which is advantageous. So you're not too concerned about what happens with the market. You're simply responding to what the market does, which is very useful. It puts you in control. So that's it for this video. That's all I got. Thanks for watching.